Hey everybody, welcome back to a very busy, messy workspace. Um, but this is going to be, number one, we're doing the unboxing here of this kit. And this is not a new kit, but what we're doing with this kit is really cool. Okay, so you guys know I love doing the what if modeling. Like, it's one of my favorite things to do. Um, but I am in several modeling groups on Facebook um, and some, some other places. Um, in one of them, right now, going on, there is a group build slash contest going on in the, this what if modeling group I'm part of. And they're calling it Cold War Reversal. And the whole point is to take a um, kind of 50s, 60s, all the way up to, to the early mid 80s Cold War aircraft and reverse it. And what if it? Um, which, of course, you know, is right up my alley. I love it. Um, so, you know, after thinking of all the different projects we could do, so let me back up. So basically what it is, is it's, it's taken aircraft, um, you know, a Cold War fighter plane, and build it for the other side. Um, you know, so you could have like a phantom that's, you know, in, in Russian or no, it doesn't even have to be Russian. East German. It could be North Vietnamese. It could be, um, you know, just switch it. It could be a, a MiG-21 that's flying for the British. It could or the Americans or whatever. So um, I just was sitting there thinking about it, thinking about it. And, you know, not only is it is it going to be what if to to reverse, but I was trying to think of like what two aircraft kind of have similar mechanics, have a little bit of a similar look, and and you know, could I kind of swap and legitimately say, while well, these two have a similar purpose, um, you know, and and I was also thinking too that like I, if I'm going to do this, I want to pick an an airplane that has great markings you know and so what i came up with was honestly i'll take an f-14 an f-14a and i'm gonna take a mig-23 right two variable geometry wing fighters two planes that are you know at the time anyway were essentially just interceptors right uh in, in the mid 80s the f-14a had no air to ground capability and neither does the mig-23 so I'm going to take a MiG-23 and I'm going to say, what if the MiG-23 was the F-14, right? Variable geometry wings, so we could pass this off as a carrier-based fighter, right? Um, they're, they're basically both, they serve the same general purpose. Uh, you know, they're, they're interceptor aircraft. They're, the MiG-23 is not a dogfighter, no matter what anybody tells you. Uh, again, actual Air Force knowledge, this is a horrible turning aircraft. Now, the, the F-14 could turn, but it's still not a great turn fighter. It was designed for long-range intercepts. Um, but I think that it would be a great thing to see a MiG-23 dressed up as a Navy carrier plane. And the high visibility paint schemes that the F-14 has worn, just it, they're awesome. They're awesome. Um, so, you know, right now I'm, I'm still deciding. I, I'm having a lot of trouble finding the original um, paint scheme I wanted to do was for VF-111, the Sundowners. Um, I think that's awesome. But, you know, I might go with uh, the VF-84, the Jolly Rogers. Now, VF-84 was the original. Um, then VF-103 took over that livery. But... Um, you know, in the early 80s, it was VF-84, uh, the Skull and Crossbone Squadron. Um, so anyway, I, I have this, uh, not even the whole kit, but I, I managed to get on eBay really cheap just these pieces, which are actually the only ones I really need to pull off kind of a little bit of a conversion. I'm going to use some of these parts in the armament. I'm going to use this kit primarily. So let's take a look at what comes in this Trumpeter 148 uh, MiG-23 MLD. It's a Flogger K. I use this because this is basically the ultimate, you know, ultimate uh, evolution of the MiG-23, um, which I think would best translate into what the F-14 had. We're not going to use all the Russian parts on this. We're going to use a lot of it, but there are going to be some things we're going to leave off. 
Um, we're going to replace with some of the F14 parts and everything. So let's see. We got this standard. Um, this gives you a, an idea of how old this kit is, right? It's about six years old now. So we don't even look at this. So like Trumpeter often does, you got some some separate areas here. Um, we'll take a look at them afterwards. I'm actually going to take everything out of this box right now. So we'll look at the instructions later. I want to look at the parts now. And... Well, you know, we can look at the weapons because none of the weapons on this thing are going to be used. Um, I'm going to put all American weapons on it, of course. Um, but these are, you know, pretty nicely done. You've got your AA6s here. Of course, I'm using American designations. Um, you know, we can use these for some other projects later. Okay. And two sprues. Now, I think there's other weapon sprues in here. Yeah. Now, I have um, some Husky weapon sets that have actual uh, sidewinders in there, but you know, the truth is because the AA2s were basically reverse engineered from sidewinders, we, we might get away with just using these as sidewinders. They come in um, not so much these guys, but these ones could represent various models of sidewinders. Um, We've got our AA-8s, we've got our AA-11s, nicely done archers there. But of course, you know, we'll put them away and use them for future projects, we're not going to use them. These launch rails, again, future projects could be uh, pretty useful, we're not going to use them, but nice detail on all these weapons here. Pretty good. Um, okay. So let's start with looking at the fuselage here. Kind of a softer plastic. Um, let's see. So very finely done panel lines. I want to be really careful to not fill them in completely. You know, when we're doing multiple coats of primer and paint and everything. This looks like a little cockpit tub. Zoom in to avoid the shadows we're getting. Um, good detail there. Uh, now I don't know exactly what I'm going to do instruments and stuff wise to make that a, an American uh, you know more American cockpit but we'll work on that eh, not too bad a little bit of flash here and there but really nicely done panel lines all around um, so we've got our main fuselage pieces and I'm not exactly sure what that is yet but intakes now these are kind of to me reminiscent of uh, phantom intakes which means we can use some uh, phantom type stenciling around there and everything nicely done though with the uh, bleed flow vents and everything and I'm really excited to start this project I can't even begin to tell you uh, wings are are actually very similar in size and shape to the F-14. These, well, this is a top and a bottom, I guess, because this would be for a wing hardpoint. I'm assuming, I'm assuming, I don't know yet. You know, I haven't really built a MiG-23 in 148 scale before. So the landing gear FOD guard, I don't know if we really need to put that in. Again, lots of things to change, you know, because we're building a Navy carrier plane out of this not a Russian frontal aviation uh, fighter. And here we've got some main gear, nose gear, stable leaders, another wing, uh, some landing gear pieces, nicely done. 
everything's really nicely done on this trumpeter. Um, a lot of people don't like trumpeter kits, I think. A lot of the ones I've seen are very good. There's a dramatically different shape to the vertical stabilizer on the MiG-23 compared to the F-14. So getting markings to transfer from one to the other could be a little difficult, um, but you know we'll, we'll do the best we can. There's the instrument panel, which has uh, lots of recessed areas for uh, dials and stuff and gauges I'll have to check if uh, you know we have a nice decal to go in there but now one thing we're gonna have to get rid of is this big stabilizing fin on the bottom and that is where we are going to well I'll, you'll see what we're gonna do with it um, I have a plan. There's the wing glove, um, intake trunks. Nice pieces. Gears for the wings. Um, I'm really happy with the level of detail on the kit. I think it's going to go really, really well. Lots of pre shading to do. Um, you know, lots and lots. Uh, here's the seat. I'm not even going to open it because I have a, um, a resin Martin Baker ejection seat. The exact one that would be in the F-14. So, we're going to swap that out. We've got air brakes. And I'm going to model these open just for a little touch of life. Um, fuselage top, again, great detail. Very finely recessed panel lines and rivet details and stuff. Um, I don't think we're going to be mounting any of these drop tanks, um, but. Again, lots of good stuff for spares and uh, follow-on models. Two sprues with hard points, pylons, all sorts of stuff. We might use some of these. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, we'll really have to look into it. And... This is for the 23mm gun. We've got engine parts, nozzles, um, internal bulkheads and stuff, more cockpit tub parts, uh, gear bays and everything. One of the interesting things I'm going to have to do is um, see if I can get the actual engine nozzle for the Tomcat to fit on there somehow, so I have that little bit of realism going into it. Um, so here are some other engine parts. Um, you know, I'll have to see how it all shakes out. Um, this must be my canopy clear parts, all protected in foam. Can I slide this off? Am I crazy or is there a canopy part that's missing? No, here it is. Here it is. Let's see. Wow, excellently clear, not distorted at all. Awesome. Very nice clear parts. Now, I'm thinking we also have parts for a MiG-27 on here, just to make it easier for them. 
but everything looks really, really nice. You can see my finger very well under that. So, I'll put them away later. Um, we've got the MLD nose cone, pedo, and then these uh, are chaff and flare launchers. Um, now these are very useful if you want to make a MiG-21 Bison. Um, and I'm not going to put them on this model, but these are good to keep for later on. So, and then oh, also we have some photo etch. Lots of photo etch parts. Awesome kit. And I'm really excited. Now, I still can't say, like I said, I can't say which of all this I'll be using, which I won't. These are like weapons, stencils, and everything. Probably won't be using them because I won't be using the uh, Soviet weapons. Lots of decals for lots of different things. So we have in the cockpit decals, which I'll definitely be using. I, I don't think I'm going to replace the cockpit that much. I might spruce it up a little bit. Um, unfortunately, all these markings and stenciling I can't use, but I'll be using basically the cockpit type stuff, and that's it. Um, but the decals do look really nice, and I'll keep them as spares, you know, for any other thing I do. So it looks awesome. Now to supplement all this, like I said, oh, getting into the instructions here, um, this is a, a big instruction booklet. Now if we were building this properly, uh, we've got some really nice full color painting instructions and marking instructions. or not. And then another one for weapons and pylons. And I'll save those in case I ever choose to build, you know, the weapons up or anything else. We've got all of our parts trees, tail spout, and like every other aircraft, we start with ejection seat, cockpit build, and we start working through intakes, gears, fuselage, engine. That's helpful for me to figure out how I'm going to do that. Now this is that bottom fin that I'm going to have to get rid of. Um, and I'll actually be cutting away this part and mounting the tail hook there and I'll be using the uh, ventral fins from a Tomcat on either side to return that stability. Very clear instructions though, great illustrations. The mechanics for how the wings work. I think I probably would want to paint the wings completely and then install them. I mean, in assembly all seems pretty straightforward, you know, no big mysteries or anything. Um, yeah, and then as I go, I'll have to be making plans for, um, you know, how we're going to how we're gonna do the Americanization of it, and I'll figure that out as I go. Because um, there's gonna be a lot of, a lot of stuff that's kind of not here, so. Now, I was gonna originally buy a whole Tomcat kit, but then I realized I don't need all those pieces, and fortunately, I found a seller on eBay selling basically exactly what I needed to do this. I think there's one thing this doesn't come with that I need to order, and that's the under chin, um, the the pod. Yeah. So, but here we've got uh, Phoenix. I I've got better sparrows than these, so I won't be using them. Um, but we've got 
the um, the mounting for the sparrows. Now this, this is huge, um, so trying to figure out where they're gonna go on this aircraft is uh, gonna be a challenge. <laughs> it's gonna be a challenge, and I might have to. Um, I don't know. I might have to figure it out in in odd different ways, but uh, we'll figure we'll figure it out. We'll figure it all out. Um, I have, like I said, these. It comes with a tail hook, which I need. Uh, it comes with the ventral fins, which I need. I've got the actual F14 engine nozzle, which helps out. And and that's basically you know I mean that's really all I need to. Use. Oh, and then. Uh, for the main landing gear, I'll need the uh, the hookup for the catapult. And I'll I'll grab that and I'll you know find a way to hook that up to the landing gear, uh, front landing gear. But I mean, like the the modifications to make it a carrier plane are are not that hard to do. I'll be able to to hook all that up and figure it out. I do need to order. I have a, a resin, um, you know, under chin sensor that well this you can barely see it but there's one that goes under the chin um, I guess I do need to order that after all so there that's good now I know that I wasn't sure if I got that in here so I'll just be working with these F14 parts and you know the weapons and uh, you know we'll see them added on as it goes so I am super excited to get this build started it's going to be, I mean, it's going to be a lot of fun. I can only hope that when this, you know, video actually comes out, folks are as excited about the concept as I am. I still haven't, haven't figured out the decal options. So like I said, um, you know, I'm really still trying to find the VF-111 Sundowners decals because that's the scheme I really want to do this plane in. I, I really want the Sundowners. They're bright. They're colorful. They're really easily recognizable. Now, VF-111 is a, a, like an aggressor squadron. Um, so finding the F-14 decals for it has been really hard. I have not been able to find them. So listen, I hope you guys will be as excited as I am to see this take shape and come together and um, I'm going to be getting started when it's right away because there's also a time limit. I have to have it done. Oh, intakes. Um, and building a Navy plane is also a little bit out of my comfort zone because, you know, I'm an Air Force guy. So um, I think this will be fun for that too. Force me to stretch my, my wings a little bit. Let's get started. This is going to be awesome. So... I will see you really shortly as we get started on the Cold War Reversal What If Build MiG-23-F14. to F14. Join me.